I got a new keychain. Volunteers to read. I'll be following. Uh, King James, New King James, please. New King James? Whatever you want. King James, New King James, both will do. Can you raise your hand? Janine. Janine, you have got Romans 14, 17. Who else? Mom? You've got... Hebrews 11, 1. Mm -hmm. Who else? Who else? At least you've got 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Matt. 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 Uh, verses 2 through 4. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Matt, you've got 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 19 and 20. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 19 and 20. Who else? Who else? Who else? Brother Luke? I'm going to plug. That's okay. Um, you can still do uh, Mark chapter 4, verse 20. 4, 12. 20. And who's the last one? Who's the last volunteer? All right, Clarissa, you've got Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, six texts of scripture tonight. Oh, are we ready? Yeah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you as we come before you now, as we all always do here in a great state of praise and worship and thanksgiving, thanking you first and foremost for our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus for the beautiful Holy Spirit who lives and dwells mightily on the inside of us, for your word which is alive and full of power in our lives at all times. We thank you for the anointing in this place right now, the anointing operating, manifesting in and through each and every one of us, and that there is no limit as to how much of the anointing we can experience here tonight in this place. Father, I continue to thank you for open hearts and open minds. Open eyes and open ears. And Lord, the title of the message tonight, Expectation and Anticipation. So I thank you, Holy Spirit, right now for empowering and prompting each and every one of us to be in a great state of expectation and anticipation for your exceeding great precious promises, all of your promises that are manifesting in and through each and every one in this place tonight. So Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for progress and growth and maturity and completeness and ultimately coming to the place of perfection that you've called us to be. So we thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay. So, the title of tonight's message, Expectation and Anticipation. Now, what do we know about expectation and anticipation, and how does it connect to our walk as sons and daughters of God. Tell me about state, the state, a state of expectation and anticipation. What does that mean to you? What does that sound like? A positive experience or negative? Positive. It could be, it could be negative. Yeah. You know, uh, it could be. Uh, yeah, 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 you know what? It could be. It's something like expecting with excitement. Yeah, you know, for the most part, when you say expectation and anticipation, it usually comes with a positive connotation to it, mm -hmm. right? Okay. All right. So, what do we know about it? Well, first thing that came to my mind is that you're expecting a baby. I heard. Expectation. <laughs> no, if your expectation, okay. you're looking forward okay. to the baby. It's a good example. Right. Okay. All I right. mean, that's the first okay. thing that came to my mind. Yeah. You know, I think that's interesting. Um, that you said that, because Paul makes a very profound statement about um, let me find it, I want to quote it right. But that's the common term that is used. She's expecting. Yeah. Galatians chapter 4 verse 19. I find this is, this is an awesome verse. Come on. Galatians. My little children, Galatians chapter 4, verse 19. You ready? My little children, of whom I travail in birth, 
again until Christ be formed in you. My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Does that sound like Paul? I don't know. Does that sound like Paul? He's just meditating. Does that sound like Paul? Does that sound like Paul was in a state of expectation and anticipation? Yes. I'll read it again. My little children, of whom I travail in birth, again until Christ be formed in you. Now what does travail mean? Does travail, do we normally put a positive connotation to that or not so positive? So he's in a state of expectation and anticipation. Would it be fair to say? Until what? And this is just ties in beautifully for tonight. Until Christ be formed in you. So there was some travail, there was some pressure, there were some things he was going to have to go through. What is one common thing, though, despite the persecution and trial and tribulation that Paul went through? What does he continually remind us about his state of being in the midst of this? Peace and joy, right? Okay. So even in the midst of persecution and pressure, his state of expectation and anticipation was so great that despite the pain and the pressure of this natural realm, and perhaps even on his soul, he was still in a great state of peace and joy. Yes. That's going to be very, very important tonight, okay? Title of the message, Donnell, Expectation and Anticipation. Are you with me? Okay. Thank you for bringing that. That actually tied in beautifully. Um, and I like that because... Um, Everyone here tonight, or who at least you know you got the message, came with their their, their favorite scripture of promise, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I talk about that and I make that comment, tell me about the connection to expectation and anticipation of the specific promise, your favorite scriptural promise that you brought with you. And don't, don't tell me what it is yet, but just tell me about the connection. What, what, what is it that the state of expectation and anticipation? When you're state, what you're feeling while you're what? doing, is that what you're asking? Well, the connection to the promise. Okay. Excitement. Excitement, yeah. Donnell? You know, expectation and anticipation has to be predicated upon something that was said or promised to you. To you. Okay, right, okay. So if there is no promise, what is there to expect? Right. Okay. Henceforth, that's why it's so important to know the exceeding great precious promises of God. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. So, what are some things that can hinder? Does God desire us for, desire for his children to be in a continual and ever increasing state of expectation and anticipation? Yes. All right? I would say that's fair, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, is that the case with a lot of people within the body of Christ? No. And I know there's many different reasons, but why do you think that is? What happens? A promise is given. They get discouraged and they don't see the promise. Okay. What a lot of the time discourages them in reference to a promise that's given? In other words, Paul desired, I travail in birth until Christ be formed in you. So he was believing that not only would everybody accept Christ as Lord and Savior, but they would come to the full revelation, the full realization of conforming into the image of Christ more and more and more while they were here, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there was plenty of times and plenty of things that he saw that seemed to be an exact opposition of what he was believing for and in a straight state of travail for them. Are you with me? Okay, go ahead, Jimmy. I said time. I said time. I said time. To answer your question. Okay, well, just give me the little more of a... The waiting. They get the waiting. tired of waiting. Okay, okay, very good, very good. Go ahead, Donna. The answer what she's saying, time is relevant. Because they hope they've heard. Make the heart set. Set. Uh, he took mine. I have it open. <laughs> okay. Proverbs 13, 12. Hope deferred makes the heart set. So when the desire is fulfilled, it is a tree of life. Okay, and I might be jumping a little bit ahead. 
But mom, Hebrews chapter 11, 1 says what? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things, of things hoped, hoped for, for, the evidence of things, things not, not seen. seen. So the more prevalent, the more real that evidence is to me, even though it may not have manifested yet in this natural realm, the more real, the more detailed that image of hope, would it be fair to say that should lead me to being in a state of greater expectation and anticipation? Yes. Hope is the anchor. Hope is the anchor of the faith, the promise. Of the soul, right? All right? Okay? So, yes. Right? Okay? Hebrews 6. The anchor. Now, that's going to be important, what he said right there. Okay, so now let, let's start to put these connections together. Who's got Romans 14 17? Go ahead, Judy. For the kingdom of God is not eating or drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Okay. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink. I know we talk about this a lot. The kingdom of God. Now, where is the kingdom of God? Within us. you. Within you. Mm -hmm. All right? The, primary, the kingdom of God is within you. Now, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness and peace and joy where? In the Holy Ghost. Okay? I firmly believe, and I've said this many times, but it's becoming more a greater revelation to me, that there is a direct connection to our state of expectation and anticipation, a direct connection to the manifestation of joy and peace in our lives. In other words, I believe that the number one thing the enemy is after to try to take you out of a state of expectation and anticipation, whether it be through trial or tribulation or whatever it might be, what does he want to steal? Joy. Your joy, joy your and your peace. How many people have missed a harvest because they, their joy and their peace was compromised? They were moved out of a state of expectation and anticipation. They got depressed. They got discouraged, they got into doubt, they got into unbelief, and the harvest came and went. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Now, it's still incorruptible harvest, amen? It's still the, I still believe it's there for the taking. God's good like that, okay? But I am firmly convinced that God not only desires, but through the Holy Ghost, He has more than empowered us to not only be in a state, of, a continual state of expectation and anticipation, but to be growing and developing in that expectation and anticipation. Amen? Okay? So I want you to see, so there's a direct correlation. The kingdom of God, the divine nature, is in us, yes? Mm -hmm. Through Christ. Okay. Now with that said, who's got 2 Peter 1, 2, 2 through 4? I know. Okay, go ahead. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Stop. Is that a promise from God? Yes. How many of you here would love to have the manifestation of grace and peace be multiplied in and through you continually? Amen? Mm -hmm. And what's the condition? It comes through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord and Savior, right? Yes. But that is a promise. Does that mean everyone's laying hold of the manifestation of that promise? Yes. No, it doesn't. Okay. All right, go ahead, Luke. Uh, as his divine power has given to us things, has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who calls us by glory and virtue, by which have by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Okay. I'm going to read it out of King James if you don't mind it, okay? I mind it. Okay. Now I'm speaking this over you right now. Ready? Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Amen? Do we receive that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, 
having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now, we've read that and talked about that many, many times, yes? Mm -hmm. Have we talked about it enough? No. No. We can never talk about it enough, okay? Now, with that said, I ask that you would come tonight with a or your favorite scripture of promise. Okay? Who would like to go first? Go ahead, Matt. Uh, 1 Peter 5, 6 through 11. 6 through 11. Okay, go ahead and read that to us. Uh, okay. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Okay. Matt, what do you love about that promise? Why is that your favorite description of promise? Because I'm kind of coming out of that. And, um, okay. like, I kept on having to just keep sound telling that over me that, like, you know, all things work out for good for those who love God. So. Okay. Uh, um, Eventually, you know, he will strengthen me and, 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 and build me out. Okay. Doesn't matter what, you know, what I'm facing or what I'm going through. Okay. You know, if whatever the enemy meant for bad, God yeah. meant me for good. Okay. And I would say, just listening to you, I would say one of the greatest areas that you can be in a state of expectation and anticipation in because in this process of travail, is it always easy in this natural realm to cast your cares upon the Lord? Not always. <laughs> no, a lot of the times it's not, especially when your faith is being tested. Yeah. But his promise to you and to all of us is as you do that, what does he say he'll impart to us? Grace. Grace, right? So would it be fair to say that in the midst of this application of casting my care upon him, every day, many, many times a day, that I should always be in a state of expectation and anticipation, right? Yeah. That there's going to be a greater revelation and greater manifestation of the grace of God for me. Now, if I really truly believe that, I want you to think about this, not just know it or mentally ascend to it. If I truly believe that, would the joy or the peace of God ever be compromised? No. The kingdom of God is not food or drink. It's righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. Amen? All right, that's an exceeding great, precious promise. That through the manifestation of that promise, you become that much more of a partaker of the divine nature. Amen? Amen. Okay, good. All right, someone else? Sure. We have to understand everything what Matt was talking about, these promises, expectations. All of these things that make it happen, they're all spiritual application. Absolutely. So many times we mean well. We think we're walking in the spirit, but at best, it's the soulish, which is dominated by the flesh. Here's a good question for you. If someone were to ask you, Donnell, can you explain to me, if you had to describe, from the spirit as opposed to from the soul? Because a lot of people wouldn't probably grasp or be able to understand the difference. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm applying this, I'm, I'm meditating on this, I'm saying the right things. I, I really believe with my heart. So how do I know whether I'm really operating or applying these things out of my spirit man or on my soulish man? Truthfully speaking, your soul man growth is predicated upon the growth of the spirit man. Jesus says, to your advantage that I go, but I don't go anymore. But when the third person of God is, which is the precious Holy Spirit, He is the only one 
they can be Jesus and the gift into the Father beyond you too. Okay. Apart from that, it's just fantasizing and wishful thinking. And when things take a stage level, go south, truth of the matter is, we always run out to what we know. Okay. Even though it could lead to death, but that's what we want to. Now watch this. And I'm not trying to put you on the spot. How do I know that what you said didn't just come from your soul? How do I know that it came from your spirit? Man, your soul is there again. <coughs> the spirit of God, the Father gave us the Son to impart life. <coughs> he also gave us the Holy Spirit. He comes with giftings. Okay. We need to come to a place to, to develop these giftings. When somebody is talking, not making faces, he said discern okay. what is being said. And the okay. spirit within you okay. will validate whether that is a yay or nay. All right. And I love that because one of the evidences that I discern, first and foremost, when he started the conversation, who was he immediately talking about? The Holy Spirit. Right? I find that and sometimes that can still come from the soul, <coughs> but you can discern to see when someone's truly in love with God and their heart and their language come forth <coughs> to administer a word, is it really coming from the heart? Is it coming from the spirit or from the soul? And there's discernment in that. You know, not, nobody knows a hundred person, maybe sometimes, and you can really discern, you're like, whoa. And I'm gonna show you because there's, it's a threefold answer when it comes to this state of expectation and anticipation. What I mean by a threefold answer, there's three primary things we should expect not if, but as that promise is actually manifesting in our lives, okay? I'm not going to jump ahead, but I, I promise you we're going to really, really tie that into what we're talking about tonight. Are you with me? But very good, okay? Um, anyone else? Mm -hmm. Or not anyone else. I want to keep it going. Promises. Okay. Let's go. I, no, hold on. Let's go. Let's go Clarissa first. No, no, she no, 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 okay, no, go no, ahead. Right. Go okay, first. Go, go ahead. Okay, well, I have a lot of them, but this is the oh, very no, 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 Yeah, we're going to get it. No, I have a lot of favorite ones, but this was the very first one years ago that came to me. Okay. And it's Mark 11, 23. For verily I say unto you that whoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatever he saith. Okay. Now that can be applied to so many things in a person's life. It can apply to happiness. It can apply to problems that you have. It can be, you know, your stress, your whatever it is. When I got a hold of that years ago. I mean, I just took that, and I, I, I really, that, that is probably my best one okay. that I like. All right, so yeah. let's, let's just take a moment and examine that. Mm -hmm. You know we quote that one all the time. Right, all right? the time. Right. But seriously, like, years right. ago, I found right. that one, and I have a lot of them, but that's the top. Right. So that's verily top. I say unto you, mm -hmm. whosoever says unto this mountain. Right. Be thou removed, cast into the sea, does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things which he says will come to pass. That man will have what he says. What he says. Okay. Can I declare that? Okay. He said that man. Right. Now, I was just studying this week with my son. I'm talking about four growth stages. I'm only three. Wait, say that again? Four growth stages. Okay. You got the newborn and you got the toddler. We'll put them together. Okay. Then he addresses. The young man that he just is full grown man. So when you come to maturity, he's like, then you're able to come to the Father's storehouse. Then you're able not to just have faith in God. You come to a place that you can literally operate in the faith of God. Okay. Now to that man, right. Jesus wouldn't be saying it. And well, you know, maybe you can, maybe you can't. But these are things he's telling us to act as someone. Come on. You yeah. can do this. You can do this. Don't set up, man. Don't be content with just being born again. Yeah. Just being a toddler. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm talking, you come into a place that your language has been perfected in the heavens. Amen. You're speaking the language of your Father. Amen. But the Holy Ghost is the primary operator of this. And we don't know, and I say over and over when I talk to people, I say the Holy Spirit must be to you what Jesus was to them. Because so many times they talk, they didn't get it. They're right there. But during the after action review, he pulled them aside. This is what I'm saying. Yeah. And still they didn't get it then. 
Now, all entered after the Spirit of God, after they were born again, and the Spirit of God descended upon them. They was totally 180 degrees different than what they were. Absolutely. And that will, that will get to, to my, my promise. I'm not going to go there yet, but that has everything to do with my favorite scripture of promise. Okay, so got you there. And you know, I want to just go back on this one more time just to make one more little connection to that. So we know what you just said, Mark 11, 22, where he says, have faith in God. The Greek actually says, have the faith, the faith of, God. of God, right? And I love what he says over here and why this specific message has been so vehemently attacked by the enemy and people that attempted to stand on this promise and operate in this promise and lay hold of this promise, okay? Uh, Romans chapter 3, you don't have to turn there, verses 3 and 4. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yet let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, ready, Mom? That thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. So if I'm standing on this promise, would it be fair to say the enemy is going to do everything he can mm -hmm. to try to take me out of this state of expectation and anticipation, compromise and steal the manifestation of joy and peace in my life to get me over into this place of doubt and unbelief? What if some, does the faith of God really work that way? After all, I mean, I tried it for six weeks and, you know, Nothing really seems to be working for me. No longer in a state of expectation and anticipation. You might have been an hour away from a harvest coming, but he pulled you up and out of that place, took that state of peace and joy, expectation and anticipation went out the window, and you just missed a harvest. And you may have missed a hundredfold harvest. And we're going to get into the threefold. This is I love the threefold manifestation of what we're talking about in reference to these promises. Are you with me? Okay. Excellent commentary so far. Uh, Clarissa, then Vanessa. Uh, mine was, and then I kind of like you, I had a whole bunch too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we can, we can be here until we can be no, here No, but I've had that tonight. for like decades. Yeah. So for me, it was John 8, 31 uh, and 32. It says, if you hold to my teachings, you are my disciple. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Okay, okay, all right. I'm giving everybody time to it, so if you don't mind, can you minister to us and elaborate a little bit more on that promise? Um, well, I think that, like at first, like we all are very familiar with you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Like that's a very popular saying. But it's a, it, there's an and before the verse even begins. It says, and you shall know the truth. It's the beginning part that if you hold to my teaching, because I think that things do come, I don't think I know, things come to try to shake, the enemy comes to steal the word. So shakings come, and it's saying in the midst of all of that, if you still stay alone with me, even though it hurts, and even though sometimes you may feel tired, but if you sit still and you wait on me, then you'll see, I will open that, that word open to you, and it will make you free. You know, you'll see me in a different light. You'll understand the way that I move differently. You'll see the way that I think, and all of these things begin to crack open. And I think it's beautiful because even in those those times when you're weary, he he always sends somebody with the word to encourage you to remain still in the truth. And I think that's very important because our whole walk is really holding to the teachings. Because it's one thing for you to know it. And then whenever you get in a conversation, just casually not even thinking, you're saying things contrary to, to what God has said. You know, it's easy that whenever you get frustrated, you begin to operate contrary to what God has said about you or any of the situations you begin to think wrong. So all of these things are important for us to remain in his teaching and what he has said about you and situations and not move from it regardless of how you feel, what runs through your minds, what comes in your emotions, it's staying sure to, to the Excellent. Word of God. I want to say this too, okay? Weariness. In the natural. 
is weariness real? Yes. Right. When you are tempted to receive and feel weariness, would it be fair to say that during that time your faith is being tested and why? In other words, we know, we're not, we know feelings are real, but we're not supposed to go by our feelings, correct? Mm -hmm. So if all of a sudden I start to feel weary, would it be fair to say that I can recognize that and connect that to my faith now as being tested? Yes, so. If, okay, right, good, <laughs> very good. Yes, absolutely. Why? Why can I consider that now my faith is being tested, even though I feel tired, I feel weary? I just, I mean, even... Like, what promise do I have? When I say weary, it's like when you're wrestling with a thought day in and day out, or like a thought is just bombarding you. It really can't. It's like even if your body's resting, if your mind is not at rest, you're, you're not resting at all. You'll wake up tired. You know, so, so my faith is being tested because I have a promise of, you said, rest. Do I? I, I have a promise of rest. Okay, we may look at it as something negative, but when the pressure, not the temptation, but when the test yes. comes, it has to. What it does, it validates the truth of God, what is actually working in you. Yes. You don't know that right. until you put under the squeeze, and what's in you will come out of you. So as I know that, Donnell, but what you just said, I did, did mentally ascend, no, that is revelation knowledge, truth to me. Would my joy, peace, expectation, or anticipation be compromised in that position? It can, but it don't have to be. Exactly. That's what I'm getting at, okay? This is what I'm talking about, divine and strategic positioning to where nothing can stop that harvest from coming forth, okay? Are, are you with me? All right. Clarissa, that was very, very good. Right. Who's phone's ringing? Fisting. Yeah. Okay. All right. Like okay. All right. All right. So, all right. Next one. Who wants to volunteer for the next promise? <laughs> well, oh, I'm sorry. Vanessa, you are. I apologize. No, it's okay. Um, for me, it was Philippians uh, 1. I said 6, but I kind of want to start at 5. So, 5, 6. Absolutely. Take your time. Okay. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And okay. I picked that one really six, right? But I felt like it was incomplete, so I added five. Okay. Um, okay. Can you read that to us again, six? please? Can you read yeah. it to us one more time? <laughs> okay. Just six? Go, read five and six. Okay. For six. your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, be confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. How does that speak to you? Tell me about your expectation and anticipation of the manifestation of that promise in your life. Um, well, like, I just kind of marinate on it when I'm going through tough times to know that even though I may be going through something tough, God started to work in me and he's going to complete it, even though I might not feel it or see it in the natural. Okay. Just holding on to that promise, okay. it leaves me like expecting to be a better Vanessa okay. in the future. All right. And even more specifically, with what you just read, what does a better Vanessa look like? Describe a little bit more in detail what a, quote, better Vanessa is. Read it again. Um. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, I guess being confident in the word, keep going, keep going. okay, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day. That's what I want to know. When you get that, the work, what is the work? Changing of the heart? Okay. No, you know, that's part of it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Good. Confidence. Uh, confidence. It's not scripture. It's a key. Okay. 
Wait, say that again. It's, it's not scriptures. It is a he. Okay. And you understand you get the second and the third members of the Godhead working for you. When you walk in union, locked together with the Holy Spirit, we can talk about confidence. We can talk about the promises of God. But when the heat is on, who are you looking for? Mm -hmm. He needs nothing. That's why I say it's good when you have the emotion you feel his presence. But even if you don't, because your intimacy, you know that there's no place you can be that he's not. Okay. Okay. And so I don't want to begin to screw things out of my mouth that's contrary to him. Because when I'm like this with him and the enemy's looking, I need to swap by him anyway. Right. He don't know who's looking at. And should you act the wrong or act, act out of character and things begin to come yes. out of your mouth that's not yes. Oh, there she right. is. Yep. There she is. Yep. Okay. You're absolutely right. Okay. All right. Go ahead. No, no. No, in reference, I, get, I just want to finish with her promise mm -hmm. because I want to help you define. I want you to, what is that work? Um, well, well, like, um, I was thinking, and I don't know if I'm understanding this correctly. He but, began a work in um, you, okay. Vanessa. Okay. You got mm -hmm. saved. You accepted Jesus. Go mm -hmm. ahead. You said it. I was just saying fellowship with the Word is what I was thinking, like, knowing the Word. <coughs> How about, we read, how, about, how about what we read in Galatians as to what Paul said? My little children, I travail in birth until Christ be formed in you. Is there any limit as to how much Christ can be formed or manifested in and through you? Right? Okay? That gets me excited expectation anticipation that not only can I have it not only is it mine but there's no limit as to how much this work can work in me okay you see you see the anticipate so now like what Donnell said oh, yeah he thinks he's gonna get that boom boom hit no joy and peace you're not taking no uh, uh not happening amen can I say yeah when Paul was like that He's talking from experience and encounter with every Right. When he used a word like trivial, the only one in those days. Let me talk about it. That's hard press. We talking spiritual yeah. hard pressing. Yeah. Well, I think everybody can know what you Now I know given birth, but we've all been around difficult people. Okay. And it can be a lot. Yes. I mean, it can just teach you, like, oh, yes. Lord Jesus. Male or female. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, where you just, every time you get around, you got to take them in doses. <laughs> you know, and you can, so you can travail with, with uh, staying in the spirit, even around this person. You know what I mean? To always to, to show kindness, to show gentleness, to really see it through God's eyes. Yeah. You know, that I don't get caught up with what I see. Like, I know. In the flesh, I can be offended. In the flesh, I can be thinking about me. I can go into selfishness quite easily, you know, and be like, why, why do I got to put up with this? You know, why do I have to hear this? Why do I got to deal with this? And we can all feel that way. But I think that to choose God, to choose to step, to show mercy and kindness, that there's a whole lot of travailing in there. And I think that because we can sometimes get caught up on what it looks like on the outside, we haven't really learned and understood yet, just yet, quite well. I know he's taken us there. Every moment he's walking us into it. But to understand that he looks at the heart. If your heart position and the way that, that he that, the way that God is is not growing in you, it doesn't matter how much you claim on the outside. You're just as broken as the next person that doesn't know how to hold it together. You can clean it up nice, but you and him are in the same boat because your heart posture is the same. So, I mean, growing in travail, like, it's, it's a very deep thing that all of us go through. Man, I'm looking at. Man, Before you go, I just want to read this real quick. I just, just feel, don't lose it, all right? In my spirit, in, 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 in my spirit, all right, I, I sense that this, these two verses need to be read, all right? Because we're talking a lot about travail. So let's renew our minds to this truth, to this promise. Romans 8, 26, 27, ready? Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmity. Promises, ready? Right? Okay, thank you. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, 
but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. All right? A groaning, a yearning, a travailing, that the Holy Spirit is always ready and willing to come to our aid when our faith is being tested, when our faith is being challenged, okay? I that just spoke That's uh, between you and him. Just really fast, because that is actually the meditating other people went through some stuff. I, so that was, I guess she's not going to do the yeah. opposite. <laughs> <laughs> right, go ahead. No, I've been meditating on that one because one when, when it says that he groans, because I don't, I don't know as I ought. So it's like the blindness, the infirmity of me not knowing. He speaks on my behalf, and I can trust him. That I don't know how to pray about this. You know, I don't, I don't know what, what scripture to pull from. I don't know what truth to lean on. I don't, I don't know where to go just yet, but I know that I can trust you. And that you are groaning in the midst of, of me not knowing what I should. You know, so I just found a lot of comfort in that. So would it be fair that the, the Holy Spirit himself comes to travail on our part? Mm -hmm. well, see, I, may I? Yeah, absolutely. Please. And then Janine. I'm going to let my sister go first and I'm going to follow you. Mm, you're sweet. Yes. Mm, I was just going to say, when you were talking about travail, I'm not sure that that I, I think it needs to be looked at differently when you're talking about travailing because someone else is annoying. And then more to travailing with myself. Why am I struggling to be able to, right? why am I seeing that? but not by that travailing on the inside of me is me travailing for this is not who I am. I'm not somebody that looks at people this way. I'm not someone that's been irritated with people. Rather than travailing, I'm trying to put up with this annoying person. Mm. Right? You see the like there. No, I can do that. I can do that. Keep going. Keep going. Strong right side. That was all I was saying. <laughs> no, because he always deals with us. Right. You're absolutely correct. Yeah. But it always comes with us. But that's where we grab. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. Now, Donnell, I know you hold your thought. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, when we talk about prayer, let's put it in context as our big brother and officer is actually talking to us. Talk a little louder, please. Not for you. <laughs> okay. um, Prayer is a form of communication. And the thing is, you and I, we work together, we just enjoy each other's presence, we just constantly talk. That's just that's communication. We, from a spiritual perspective, we say it's praying. But there's times we bring Thanksgiving, there's a need that needs to be take, taking place. And the Word tells us, a favorite prayer of a righteous man, an individual that right standing with God, he said it's a great battle. We throw the Word around like intercession. I said, there is no intercession apart from the intercessor, mm -hmm. which is the Holy Ghost. Right. And there is time when something is heavy. Now, you deal with hierarchies in the demonic realm. Mm -hmm. Cannot press through. Now, prevailing in the spirit. But we use that word, which is, a, which is, a, this is, this is a, a strong weapon. That's what it take out yeah. a whole lot of stuff. And you talking about your emotion is out of check. And the word of God said when you walk in the spirit, as he in the spirit, he brings all your soul, which is your emotion to what he is, but he brings that in check. It's nothing you do. As long as you're resting in him, the fruits are automatic. Mm -hmm. There's times some people who just, just man, why don't you just go someplace? You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Now, so they can just say all kinds of crazy things. It's not even affecting me. Because now you've been encapsulated by His grace, by His presence. But this is a practice on a daily basis. So when, you, so when you think you got it, that's when the light will throw your curveball and you hit upside your head. Well, you thought, I thought I was here. But then I say, nobody got it on 100%. Because there's times I may just fly in this. I need a co-partner. Somebody that loves me, to pull up, she sees things I don't see. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Not everybody got the same gifting. Now you got snipers. They looking at things from afar. They being more meticulous as they looking for the enemy. 
You got those who have the mouth who speaks on behalf of God. You got those who have the ear. You got those who see. We all need each other, and we're gonna flow. But I'm just saying, I still should be able to operate them. But I'm saying, when you get somebody on the local body, somebody within my community, in my group that I run with, we have to be dependent upon each other, the Holy Ghost in each other. And I can't be going to somebody with prayer, and I know that the natural life is tore from right. the floor. Now, now, I'm not here about just saying words. When I go to you, I need to know that when you open your mouth, that turns around. Okay, baby. What is it? I need to know that. It's other than that, because what we say is more like just wishful thinking. I hope you would do it. Jesus said he loves you, but the same love he loves me. He said, you know that he heard your prayer. You know you got your answer. It's going to be yes, no, or leave. But when you walk away, you should have an answer. Prayer is a dialogue, not a monologue. We get in, like, sometimes it's just more important that you come to a place that you're listening. And we just go in and just want to vent. Not for you finish venting. Okay, I'm out. And the Holy Ghost still speaks. They do. The question is, are we listening? <laughs> okay. All right. Who's next? Oh. No. All right. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Jess. <laughs> no, because uh, with what you said, I don't want it to come off as if I'm saying that we're fighting to put up with people. Because that's, mm -hmm. that's not what I was meaning at all. Does he deal with us? Yeah, everything that you go through. He uses everything to teach and train us. Mm -hmm. It is, and I've always found that when I go to him about a particular person, he always deals with me. Yeah. I always find that. I'm like, well, what about them, you know? <laughs> but I think that even with um, Paul, when it said that he, he approached God three times concerning the thorn in the flesh, it says it was a spirit that was pretty much following him around. And I personally think, and not that it says, but I personally think that it was the Judaizers. Like he, as much as he loved his Jewish brothers and sisters, anytime he went to a town, they were right behind him, trying to stir up problems and mix the messages. So he's constantly writing back to make sure that they're still holding on to the truth. I think to me, I can find that extremely frustrating. You know, when you're, you're seeing God deliver people through the truth and the love that God has demonstrated for them in Christ and then somebody comes in and throws them off, you know, throwing all of these rules and yokes and weights and then you see the light being stripped from their eyes. It's like what is going on here, you know? So I think that even being frustrated with people, and I know that it was really saying like as far as like a difficult person. Even with that, you can feel the frustration with people that still absolutely love them. You know? I and I think it's even don't feel the frustration. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Even, even still. Because, I mean, I have feelings. Like, do I like it? No, I don't like it all the time. You know? But I know that even with the travail, <laughs> it's not just about me in that moment. And it can also be about praying for that person. Whatever is going on, death, help them. But there's always a travailing and a pushing. You know? So... I mean, I, I know plenty of people, <laughs> plenty of people that I love dearly that I just find to be sometimes can be difficult people. And I think that I can be difficult in my own way. So that's all I was saying when it comes to travail. There is times that what you're feeling what you're going through. There were not words that can articulate what you're trying to say. That's when it turns out in that realm. Yeah. And the Holy yeah. Spirit is the master translator. Yeah. Yeah. Is he not? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said, this is what he's saying yeah. in the Spirit. I, I don't know why that's so good and why I read that is because there are times where your faith is being so tested and so tried. And the temptation to come out of joy and peace and expectation and anticipation is so great. You have no other option but to move into that place. But in order to do that, you have to know him. You, you have to want, you have to know him. Okay? And once again, we talk about process, progression, practice every day. 
as we're ever coming, travailing until that work, Vanessa, for that work to that be formed in you, right? That work in progress. This is all part of it, everything we're talking about right now. Right? Are, they, are those grown tongues or a different thing? That's what I was thinking. It's a great question. Okay, in fact, I'm, I'm going to say, Auntie, do you have? No, you, okay, you guys can keep going. Okay, I'll, I just want to go to you for maybe I want to see your insight on that. Okay. See, the ground is the ground. And we have two types of tongues. We have tongues that is a language that's not known to you, but it's known to man. Then there is the tongues that when you are speaking directly to the Father, that is private. That's for you. Now you got the red hot line talking directly to the Father. That's for your edification. But a lot of times when we get in a corporate setting, we don't allow the Spirit of God to speak through us. You just start running off. And that's what Paul said. It's better to speak five words that everybody can understand than speak a thousand that nobody can understand. Yeah. Yeah. It's just this yeah. way. Yeah, and I would, I would also add to that, too, when it comes, brother, to travail. There's many a times where I start off in the practice of praying in other tongues in a great state of peace and joy that's an effortless flow. And it literally seems what could maybe be identified almost as a burden or a weight that comes upon you. And it kind of literally moves off into a groan, travail, even a cry, even a just, just from deep down in here. It's a groaning, a yearning. This is a groaning here too deep for utterance. So it almost, the utterance, the gift of utterance of the tongue, it moves more off into a place of groaning and travail. And it, it all can almost sound like if you're in a haunted house. Sometimes, just one example of like the, the way it comes through. But the best way I can explain it is just this in-depth move of the Spirit of God from in here with a heart full of compassion that moves forward in this form of prayer. And it, could, it can last a long time. It can move you to tears. It can move you to screaming. It can move you to some places you never experienced before. It can. And what we have to understand, anytime Spirit of God moves upon us in that capacity. That's a that's honor. Mm -hmm. There is We're something that has to be verbalized, <laughs> yeah. and Dad said, "I can trust you to get that verbalization out into the atmosphere." Yeah, yeah. He just not see. He has to be. I can trust. Ch I can trust yeah. Janine with this. Yeah. <clears throat> you don't know why. Also, you on your knees. You are not. You don't know what's going on. And I will also say, as uncomfortable and even painful as sometimes that's been. The harvest afterward was some of the greatest harvests I've ever experienced after that time. So when that travail took place, there was something birthed out, and you got to partake of some of that harvest. Are, are these groans always audible? So they, a lot of the times they are. It's a groaning and a travail that comes through. I mean, sometimes it can bring you to a place of silence. Um, this is I, I, I'm not put, I'm not putting this in a box to say this is an absolute. I believe a believer has more of these types of experiences the more time they spend, first and foremost, praying in other tongues. The practice of tongues is you're praying and you're learning the interpretation and that flow and you're experiencing different manifestations within you. Then you start to get taken to this place where sometimes it, just things get, you can get woken up in the middle of the night and you're not sleeping. You are dropping on your knees and moving into this place of travail and you might not even know why. A lot of times it will be revealed. But you just are obedient to know that you know this is now the Spirit of God moving in and through you in a different way, and you better yield to it. You see what I'm saying? But even with him, hey, whoa. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So that's a good thing. Amen. Let me get in on that. Right? Okay? All right. Hopefully we somewhat answered that. You know, but once again, this is why I've always prompted you, Luke, pray in tongues, pray in tongues, pray in tongues, you know, practice, practice, okay? It's important for everybody. Okay, next promises. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> you didn't go yet, Brother Chad. I'm not up yet. Oh. Oh. Matt, that gives me I'll tell you what, let's, let's, let's go to the next verse, let's up the ante now, okay? Because we've been all talking about our favorite mm -hmm. scripture of promise, right, Vanessa? Mm -hmm. Okay, who's got 2 Corinthians chapter 1? Mm -hmm. chapter 
Who's got that meeting for us? I know somebody volunteered for it. Was that you? Yeah, 19 and 20. Now, just before he reads, let's review again. Let's review again. Okay, the kingdom of God. First and, where's the, first and foremost, where is the kingdom of God while we're here? In, in you. All right, so the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. We're talking expectation, anticipation, specifically not having joy and peace compromised when your faith is being tested. Okay? Grace and peace be multiplied to you, whereby are given us exceeding great precious promises, that by these you may be partakers of the divine nature that is in you, in him. Amen? Okay. These promises, 2 Corinthians 1, 19 and 20. Go ahead. Matt? For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among about you by us, by me, Silvanus and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him was yes. For all the promises of God... How many? All. How many? All. Okay. For all the promises of God in him are yes. In him. Where at? In him. Where at? In him. <laughs> okay. Are yes and in him, amen. To the glory of God through us. Okay. Now that should excite us. Because everybody came in here with their favorite scripture of promise, right? Mm -hmm. And in him, who is the divine nature, the kingdom of God, that promise is not no, it is yes, yes and amen. Does that mean though we always receive the manifestation of it while we're here? Does that mean we always receive the manifestation mm -hmm. of it while we're here? Someone might be believing for healing and they don't receive it while they're here. They go home to be with the Lord because they died of that sickness. Uh, amen here on earth. Well, right, here on earth, they're going to receive it in him. It's yes and amen, one way or the other. Go ahead. My cry is that we come to the place. Is this your promise? No, his cry. Oh, okay. Go ahead. I'm just saying as a child of God, you out and about when you're looking. And I'm going to just being frank here. Some of the things that we're going through differ is no more than what's out there in the world. This is true. When you go back and look at his promises, why not? Am I saying you be on the top of all your time on this other thing? That's what I'm saying. I'm saying the Ecclesia as a whole needs to put the enemy in his place. Say that again? The Ecclesia needs to put the enemy in his place. Okay. Because when you get the miraculous movement where there is no other <clears throat> answer or to what has just transpired, you know it's only God. Even though they may deny you, but they can't refute a miracle in their midst. I think we should be walking, breathing, talking, the embodiment of everything that God is. Then I want to read this and then I want to come right back. But this is a specific word that I received today. Are you ready? No. Are you not done? I'm done. Okay. <laughs> a different perspective. Good one. A different perspective. Ready? Now listen to what he just said. Okay. The more our faith is developed, I know author finish your development, I'm with you. The more our faith is developed in seeing ourselves and our surrounding circumstances from the perspective of the finished work of the cross, the more strategically and divinely positioned we are to lay hold of every single one of the promises that was purchased there by his body and blood. Yeah. Every one. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting, is it? See, somehow oh, I don't know about all. Where's your expectation and anticipation? What happened? You started to doubt. You started to not believe. It sounded too good to be true, right? And but then you surround yourself with people with the same. Yes. I'm just Amen. saying, I see this. Yes, it's true. Yes, yes, yes. I want to surround myself with people like mine. Amen. 100%. Okay. Can we want 
Another promise? Only because I just No, no, go ahead, absolutely. Oh, you care, you know. hey, there's some, ex there's some, there's some no, expectation and anticipation here. right there. Go ahead. I had it underlined. It's um, the Second Corinthians 4, 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outer man is per uh, perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Mm. Isn't it? Amen. Amen. Well, I'm Vanessa, now. Vanessa, Vanessa, we never get old. Yeah. Amen. Because the real you, this right. body ain't the real you. Yeah. But at the same time, because of what's in you, slows the process of decaying mm -hmm. on the outside. Amen. Amen. Okay. Because our mouth is satisfied with good things <laughs> so that <laughs> you like, like, like the eagles. What's our mouth satisfied with? Which is his promises. Amen. Matt, one more time. 1 Corinthians 19 20 before we move on. I'm, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians I'm 1. I'm going to give one. Oh, go I ahead. Finally. Well, Vanessa took it. Sorry. Mine was Philippians um, 4 6 and 7, but she took that when she did six, 5 and 6. But I do I always have always loved this. I'm like Judy right now. I always love this. Proverbs uh, 3 5. It's a trust. In the Lord with all your heart, and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will. You don't have to worry about it. He will direct your path. Oh, and I take that. Beautiful. Everything. Beautiful. Everything for my kids. Amen. <laughs> Everything I do. I like that. I love uh, that. Awesome. Story. Awesome. So good. Who's next? Janine, really? Go ahead. I have two. There's work though. You want. <laughs> <laughs> but I can do it. You're going to put it in the chat. <laughs> and it's both of them were given to me by two people. Two very different people. And um, I think they're awesome how much they actually align with each other. Um, the first one is Luke 21 15. For I will give you utterance and wisdom which none of your opponents will be able to resist or refute. Ooh. And I was also given Jeremiah 33, 3, which says, Call to me, and I will answer you. I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. Thank you. Beautiful. Yes. All right, minister to us. Well, it's pretty simple. <laughs> <laughs> it is both of those speak to, um, and both of them are given to me by people who have seen that I hear very clearly the Holy Spirit that these are to the point where you are, that's the only place you're moving from. Both of them say the exact same thing. Can we illustrate? Can we give an illustrate and correct me, maybe you have a better one, but let's go back to the time of COVID mm -hmm. when you were up against the hospital, right? And Jesus gave you a promise. Mm -hmm. well, I myself, Jesus, give you a mouth and such utterance and wisdom and all of yes. your foes combined with the other to stand against the future, right? Was your faith being tested during that time? Absolutely. Were you tempted to come out of a state of expectation and anticipation? I, was not. I know you weren't, <laughs> but what most people would have, this is what I'm talking about, you were in such a state of expectation because you knew that you knew that that promise in him is yes, yes and amen. amen. By Satan pulling you out, or the world pulling you out of that expectation and anticipation, compromising joy and peace, now that promise is on hold. That actually was a perfect Now it could have gone the other way. Because I showed up at those town hall meetings at that time, and I was going and saying, this is premature, and I was telling them what I thought and why, and I was quoting research that nobody knew about. And they didn't have anything to say. And then I showed up at the next meeting at Women's and Media. All these new people were saying the same things. And he just looked at me. This was our infectious disease, like superior. And he was like, you know, I think you've asked these questions before. We can talk afterwards. He that. didn't even have answers to the. And you know, if you think about this, the state we're talking about, this brings a whole new revelation to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. See, it's that state of expectation and anticipation that is directly connected to and tied to the evidence. Is it not? There's just a knowing. It may not have manifested yet, but there is nothing that's going to prevent this 
from birthing and coming to pass. And therefore, I am in an ever-increasing state of joy and peace. Amen? And he's trying every which way. Ever. And not only that, but when he's trying, he's getting his throat slit spiritually. He's getting beat. Do you understand? So we're talking about <laughs> partaker of the divine nature. The enemy can't stand up against the manifestation of the divine nature of Christ in and through you. Vanessa, that work in progress. Amen? Yeah. Okay. Lisa, you up? Uh, mine's 1 Corinthians 13. Just the first part. This love never fails. Wow. Oh, that's it. <laughs> 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 All right, clip. <laughs> drop. Phone drop. We're done. We're good. I said, what's the mic? The mic drop. Yeah. Mic drop. Sorry, Lisa. Keep talking to the phone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love never fails. No, it's over. Yeah, that about sums it up. I, I wanted to comment on Janine's one because I think that's beautiful because she knew she heard God. She knew it. Okay. And I think that's the difference when you know you hear God. And you stand when everything else is coming against you. You get to see not only the victory but the reward. Mm -hmm. I love that. I agree, and I love like this. Is what Danielle's saying all the time is, we have to have a relationship with, and that's what you're saying, Holy Spirit. It's not just about reading here; it's about the experience. Because when you know Him and you're in a relationship with Him, you hear Him. Like you said, no one can take that from you. I know we talk about that. But I think we need to practice the art of caring for us. Because without that, you never know the atmosphere. We're talking clarity here. It kind of boosts confidence. Yeah, it does. It does. Well, how do you practice in here's the voice? What would you say to? Because I think I do. I don't they may think they do. So, so what are we falling short? And I like the scriptures when uh, Dad was going to stick it to, uh, I don't know, like, I think the guy that I took Sarah. Yep, that's correct. And he right. said, did he not tell me this is his sister? He said, what I did, I did it out of integrity in my heart. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Yep. So you may miss it. Yeah. But Dad said he thought he heard. Yes. Let's just practice. Let's do another drive on this. Mm -hmm. So you come off and leave. And the more familiar you with it, even in Mr. White Moore's chaos, his voice is distinguished. Yeah. Right. I'm going to turn that, go back home. Uh, out of all things, yes, we got to be able to hear him. Because we want to, but we're afraid to stand up because I don't know if it's really him. Do we have a promise? <laughs> Do we have a promise? In reference to hearing his voice. Yes, Father, you said, I am your child. I hear your voice. Like the child said. This is, yes, the promise is that. But there, this is a reciprocal relationship. He's speaking. You need to be attentive. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay. There's not a but. There is a however. There are many people that I know that truly, truly desire to hear the voice of God. But yet, when it comes to the specifics of the day, have you heard them? I don't know. No. <laughs> we want to get you to the point where you know that you know. Okay, that's what they should call you. That, I'm his shepherd. I'm his sheep. I hear his right. voice. You should come back no matter what you feel at the moment. You may never even give me what what you, I'm going to give you what, what you might want. But I know somewhere in there, there's a door that, there's a, a something that's locked up that God will open up if I stay with his word. That he will release that door and that door will open. And a lot of times people do hear God's voice, but they're too scared. They're afraid of speaking out. They heard something that they didn't know. Maybe it, it was so slight and it was so like, because they'd never been down that path before. Even if I feel like I may have it wrong, I said, Dad, you said, just like who was it? I said, Dad, you said, and I'm the sheep and I hear your voice and a straight job I won't follow. I think when they pronounce that truth, the enemy has nothing to work with. 
So you get to be moved outside of that confusion, which your enemy is trying to confuse your mind, into a place of where you can hear him more clearly. And then you have to take that first step. Even though you're still scared, mm -hmm. you still take that step because those steps are important as you're hearing. Those, some things I tell people, I am so scared. I said, Dad, I, I, I'm scared, but you sound your sheep, and I hear your voice. I'm going to do it. And I go in fear and everything. You know, and he said, well, they ain't going to come true. And the Bible said, and, and the Lord says that they may, yeah, they may want to come true in two days, but it may take seven days. You stand on what I said. You, you continue to declare it, even though they may have kind of like maybe better go and walk away and don't think it's going to happen. Then God puts me in that place where I'm constantly interceding, not because I'm scared anymore, but because I'm in a place where the enemy will try to keep it from happening. And I can stand between life and death. And I can say, that because you said it, I spoke it, I believe you, I know it's going to come to pass. Sometimes it may take like Abraham, it may, and God told him that it took 25 years for, uh, for Isaac to show up. That, does that mean? What he heard was wrong. What was given to him was wrong. I think sometimes people talk us out of stuff. I make it so free, but try to make it so perfect that we we're going way be be uh, uh, guess the word. We go too. We get too scared. We get caught in all this stuff and this frustration, and don't know what step to take. Don't know where to put our trust in because if we do put it in something and it doesn't happen within the next three days. We stop believing and thinking that we were wrong, and the whole time God is saying, "Trust me. I, I told you to say that. Don't don't worry about it. Do you trust me? Will you just rely on what I told you to do and trust me with it? And if somebody else comes back and say something opposite to it, the first thing the enemy is going to do is try to make you back off. You still have to stay there no matter what. So watch this. Let's up the ante. <laughs> your promise. Okay? Now, does everybody remember our promise? Okay, don't tell us. Uh, I don't understand that. Okay? Lean not onto your own understanding. Now, watch this. Expectation, anticipation. Auntie, Donnell, Chad, Luke, Charlie, in all your ways, know, recognize, and acknowledge me. I will direct and make straight and plain your path. Not only do you have the ability to hear my voice, you have access to the empowerment to do that which I told you to do. Okay? If I really believe that, would it be fair to say that expectation and anticipation should rise up within me, even in the natural, when maybe I'm not clearly hearing his voice yet? I have a promise. Not only do my sheep hear my voice, but in all your ways, I have access to be able to hear him every time, and not just hear him, access the empowerment of that divine nature to do exactly that which he's telling me to do. Right? <laughs> so see, see now that's, a pro that's, an, that's an exceeding great precious promise, is it not? Mm -hmm. Through the manifestation of that promise, I become a part partaker of the divine nature. Okay? All right. Now, follow, remember, I said this was going to be threefold. Um, did we go through anyone else for a promise? Charlie? Anyone? Charlie wasn't fair. He wasn't on the phone. I was done out either. Can anyone I else? Just one thing to what you were saying. It's my turn. It's my turn. Oh, don't do it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I, I got to wait patiently. <laughs> Psalm 91, there's so many good ones in there. Nobody brought that one up. But, uh, <laughs> Brother Luke, this is your personalized thing. What's the matter with you? Yes, you do it. Of course, you do it. My personal one? Well, I, I thought about like honoring your mother and father and your long life you'll receive. You can't do that one. You said 991. Uh, Aren't you going to do 91? Psalm 91. Well, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. The nice okay. verse in that one. Okay, excellent. Okay, but minister kind of, to us. All kinds of protective verses in Psalm 91. Okay. Just being in the secret place of the Most High. If you, if you can get to that place, there's a lot of promises unlocked for you. Amen. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, now you can go. <laughs> Clarissa, go, and then I want to read the last two scriptures, and we're going to bring this whole thing together. Okay, we're going to bring it home for the, all right, for the threefold manifestation 
of what this message is really about. But on what you say, <clears throat> a lot of us can be afraid. I like it better in the, the, the Passion Translation. Yeah. But it says, um, the only clean stable is an empty stable. So if you want the work of an ox and to enjoy an abundant harvest, you'll have a mess or two to clean up. So it's a like you. A verse of this? Uh, this is Proverbs 14.4. <laughs> Yeah, the passion. So, but really, in order for you to venture into anything, there will be a mess. You know, like if nobody has made it as a millionaire, billionaire without failure. Like they, they I was listening to um, somebody talk about uh, President right. Trump, and they were like, you know, talking about truth social and having probably to close that out or whatever the case. I don't know. But they were just like, he could take it and say that it's a failure, but I don't think that he would care that much because being a wealthy businessman, he has many successes, but he's also had many failures. You know, all of them go for a failure, but they keep going. You know, the, the, the acts of a righteous man is not that he doesn't fall, that he falls seven times and he gets back up. But if, you, if you're too afraid to fall, you're never going to know what it's like to grow in seeing the faithfulness of God, in seeing the love of God, in understanding the heart of God, in digging into the mind of God. You won't be able to actually challenge all of these things that he said because you're too afraid to step out. So I think that that is just absolutely beautiful. And if you make a mess, it's okay. Dust yourself off. Get back up. Get back in the game. Amen. And the very proof of that, which I completely agree, the very proof of that, is that it can be scary because that's the enemy's way of stopping us from doing it. And, you know, so. Yeah, good. Good. But there's a promise. He's not going to have 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 a promise
manifestation of his presence, fruit of the spirit, joy and peace, and get ready, a hundredfold return on those actual words. Can you see that? Threefold. Now, if that doesn't get you excited and cause you to pursue the exceeding great precious promises of God even that much more, then I don't know what else I can do for you. <laughs> you know what I, I know God can, right? What I'm saying, though, if you really understood what you came in with tonight when I asked that, what's your favorite scripture of promise? Okay? Because from that favorite verse should branch out to connect you to all of the other exceeding great precious promises of God. Manifestation of His presence, manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit, hundredfold return specifically on those words. Right? This is why the enemy is so interested in stealing it. To stop you before that harvest comes to fruition, right? Stop it. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. But you know what? From this night on, he's not stopping any of us. So prepare yourself. The word has been spoken. Hundredfold return on that scripture of promise you brought here tonight. And there's no limit. It's up to you. How many of them do you want? Because in him, all of them are. Yes, and amen. Yes, and amen. amen? Any other questions, comments? I have a lot to say. Go ahead. Tell me to give you the floor. <laughs> what's, the, what's the right oh, chosen to follow with the daughter? She, I have things to sell. I don't know what to say. I was just, <laughs> I'm Cordy. I said hello, Cordy, but I am just like flat. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Anyone else? Clarissa, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, I was thinking when you were saying faith is the substance of things hoped for. Because I've always heard that. I think tonight was probably the first time I was just like substance. Substance. And at this, in my mind, I thought that when I heard that faith is the, sub, the substance of things hoped for, it's like when what you have been hoping for finally arrives. It's like, yeah. But when you were reading it, I was like, wait a minute, that's no. not what he's saying. No. That's not what he's saying at all. No. <laughs> And, it, and I think it's beautiful because what it's not the object itself. And I think that sometimes we can get caught up on looking for the finish or the manifestation of what it is. But yeah. God is saying, it's always been faith. Always. So when you find yourself believing God, and this is with that expectation. Yes, and anticipation. When faith comes, that is the substance. You know. Evidence. That's the that evidence. You need an example. I mean, I, that testimony was awesome. <laughs> it's an ever-increasing hope. It's an ever-increasing hope where no joy, nor peace, nor expectation or anticipation is compromised. I think that's beautiful. That, like, you, like your hope is ever-growing to trust God more. Absolutely. Absolutely. But the divine nature. That's what it is. It's a manifestation of the divine nature within you. The kingdom of God, joy, peace, righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Are we done? <laughs> All right, we're done. Let's close in prayer. You guys ready? All right, Father, we thank you, Lord, for all that's been done here tonight. I thank you, Lord, for great revelation and great manifestation of expectation and anticipation in this place, in and through each and every one of us tonight, our partners, everyone connected to this ministry, our families, that love and joy and peace is flowing and manifesting like never before. In and through our spirits, our souls, our body, and all things have been made whole and well and sound and complete. Father, we thank you so much for this. And Father, together in absolute full agreement, your exceeding great precious promise of the word of God is going forth. It has accomplished its purpose. It never comes back void. And it's already well prospering into the thing for which it is sent. We lay hold of it tonight in hundredfold measure return of this rich, rich, rich soil. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, everybody. Everybody did good. We came prepared. Proud of you.